Welcome to the Shepherd Thinks Show. Today we are speaking with my friend Joel. Hi, Joel. Hi, Shepherd. How are you doing? Wonderful. So a week or two ago, a week ago, something like that, I put out a video and Joel responded to it with uh, 10 points and then later with four more points. And then I made a whole hour long video responding to those 14 points. And then Joel and I were kind of going back and forth. We're like, you know what, we ought to just Zoom and talk about stuff that way. And so we can see each other and chit chat and get our points across and uh, yeah, figure out what's up. So uh, is there a particular place you would like to start, Joel? Or do you want to drive? Do you want me to drive? How do, how do you want to get going on this? Well, just I'll just start and say, um, I watched your first video and um, what I heard, and I need to be corrected on this, was that you said religious people are not, and you may have even said cannot be intellectual. And then is that something you would say was accurate about what you said or? Yes, yes. And both both are not and cannot? Correct. Okay. Well, and I would say that there's, a, a religious person can be intellectual and have, a, have an intellectual conversation about something. Um, however, when it comes to theism, I don't believe that that's a, a rational, logical, intellectual uh, position. Theism is not a uh, right. that position. And so I was, I was, um, I was reacting to that. Um, and I think you know, there's lots of different levels. Like, like if I was going to have a discussion with you, hey, I'm going to try and prove there's a God. It's like, no, I'm not going to try and do that. Um, but under you know a narrow definition, I think one, one of the first things I said was, well, like, gosh, um, you know, not intellectual. What does intellectual mean? So I googled intellectual definition, came up with a um, a de definition, and it's it has to do with somebody who works, you know, with their mind and they use their mind um, and they function through their intellect. Um, and so the question is, you know, is a religious person intellectual? And I'm thinking, well, there's a vast history of theology of people who are um, you know, they're very intellectual. Um, they ask very, they, they ask deep questions like, you know, why do we have life? You know, what is, you know, what is the meaning? You know, basically, but when you have a kid and the kid says, uh, you know, why is it snowing? And you say, oh, well, because, you know, the, the moisture went up in the air and it got cold and it came down. It's like, well, why did the moisture go up in the air? Well, because of the heat. And they know you can do these whys and whys and whys. And I think theology, uh, people who are into theology ask those questions. And so, um, under that definition, clearly, um, theological people are very intellectual. I would agree that under that definition, they are. Yes. And then and I, in the definition I came, you know, described intellectual that way. And then one of the definitions, um, and acting in the definition, you, the, the source you came up with also, it said, um, you know, thinking, and then it also said rational. And rational was also mentioned um, in the definition that I had found. Um, but rational is a separate thing from intellectual. You know, intellectual, rational, rational is a part of that. Um, but for instance, if you think of an art critic um, or a music critic or um, you know something like that, they can be quite intellectual. They can look at a lot of nuance, um, but it's not necessarily, you know, when you're talking about a tone, you're not necessarily talking about your emotion. Um, it's not necessarily a rational thing. So I, I felt, first of all, it's it's obviously false that um, theistic people are not intellectual because there's a vast history um, of intellectuals who are theistic. And second of all, that you are conflating, um, although they were related, you are conflating rational with intellectual. I see rationality as being a part of intellectual. So if a person, if we're having an intellectual conversation and you say, because it rained right now, I think I'm right. Well, that's just illogical, irrational. That 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 has nothing to do with anything. Right. So I would then pull your intellectual card and say, no, nope, you're not. You're not being intellectual there. If you have right. proof, evidence, logic, reason with you, then then I'm good with it. Um, right. But I have never heard arguments for theism that have been rational reasonable intellectual they've all gone off the the edge right and it hasn't stayed but, but the point hard. being you said that they are people are not intellectual and so are you denying that people say like thomas aquinas or you know people who have you know maybe even plato um you know was had religious uh considerations 
Are you denying that those people are intellectual? Is that how you're defining, defining intellectual such that almost if someone is religious, then by definition, they cannot be intellectual? An intellectual versus intellectual. So a, a Christian person, Muslim person, they can think intellectually, they can be intellectual, but I would not bestow that title upon someone who is not at least given an, a heck of an honest go at being reasonable, rational, logical, etc. So for instance, you would deny the title of intellectual to Plato and uh, Thomas Aquinas. I mean, is that, I mean, am I correct there? Because that's, that's putting words in your mouth. So would you say Plato, because he, because he was theistic, was not an intellectual? Yeah, that, that's according to my understanding. But like, as you're saying that, like I would always, if you had asked me right now, like, do you think Plato's an intellectual? I'd be like, oh yeah, wasn't he one of those smart old philosopher dudes? Like yeah. that's, that's what in my, what's in my mind. Um, that's my bias is that anybody who is a, a old philosopher is an intellectual. Um, but I, I, I don't know where I would draw that line. If a person who I'm speaking with is reasonable, rational, logical, 99% of the time, will I have, like when I make mistakes, which I make a lot of them, when I make a mistake, does that automatically say, okay, Shepard's an idiot? Well, no, one time making an error does not. Um, so I don't know if, if a person's everything they rely upon is illogical, then they're certainly not rational so or uh, intellectual so i don't know where my bright line would be how, how much silliness i can allow into what should be a serious conversation well and I, and I think that in that case i would say that you're using the word um intellectual under your own definition and it wouldn't match yes. the definition of the vast majority of people perhaps yep yeah yeah. And, and so it's, I almost think that's, like, it's almost just like, well, in order to be an intellectual, you can't entertain religious um, you know, ideas. Well, you can think about it and you can talk about them. But if, if we had a discussion about, I said, hey, Joel, do you think there's a, a, a God? And you said, yes, I do. And then we start having a conversation about it. And we're, of course, the burden of proof isn't on me, it's on you. And you're providing evidence for that. And if then that evidence does not hold up to uh, I don't know, an intellectual level. Right. Um, if it does, and you say, hey, here's some good pieces of evidence. And I'm right. like, oh, holy but, cow, but I've been going, wrong. going back to your argument, you know, basically you're sort of going on about, you know, the rationality of that. But I'm just sort of trying to stick with what is an intellectual and can a religious person be an intellectual? And I think I would, uh, I, I couldn't possibly agree with you that a religious person couldn't be an intellectual because there are, um, probably throughout history more religious intellectuals than non-religious intellectuals. Um, and sometimes when an intellectual has a, an argument, um, it's very difficult to follow, um, which for me is an indication that, yeah, that is, that is intellectual because it's a little bit hard for me to follow. So they're really thinking and they're you know, using concepts that I'm not familiar with. Um, and so, you know, I, I think you may, have, you may have valid points about rationality and religion, but I don't think you have a valid point about um, intellectuals and religion. Yeah, and I, perhaps I'm wrong. Um, yeah. And maybe it's just that I'm looking at my experience yeah. that I have, I have challenged many people about religion yeah. and said, hey, I used to believe this stuff. Now I don't. You know, oh, it's definitely there. Tell me about it. Tell me why it's there. And we both in good faith and with many different people, the set of us, the, the both of right. us, have tried with an open mind to seek truth. And then all of the arguments I get are just right. very much lacking intellectual. Yeah. And, I, and I would have to say that I think that, you know, um, it seems like besides not being intellectual, you're also attaching a value to intellectual saying, well, if someone isn't intellectual, it, it reflects poorly on, um, you know, on their function. But um, besides that, um, that, that there are many, many people who are um, not religious who make really dumb arguments. Yes. Um, and so I would say, yes, I, I think I would, I think um, I, I would, it would be, it just seems a little bit pointless to assign um, the, the label of non-intellectual to the religious when in fact it applies much more broadly than that. Oh, it certainly does. And also I don't think that it necessarily, um, 
has a value attached to it. I think that there are people who are very valuable who are not intellectual, whether they're Absolutely. atheists or theists. Absolutely, I agree completely. I, th I I can go fishing and have fun drinking beer with someone yeah. who is not an intellectual or is an intellectual, um, right. who is or is not a theist, who is or is not a good functioning, productive member of society. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm no problem with that person. But I did catch some tones sort of like, well, you know, if you believe in God, you're kind of an idiot. And idiot isn't necessarily just a characteristic. It isn't, just, it isn't a value that's characteristic. Um, it's sort of like, uh, it implies a flaw if you're not an intellectual. It seemed like you were implying a flaw. Yes. Um, I saying I, that somebody wasn't an intellectual. Yeah, I, th I think I would say that I wish that, in other words, a value of mine is logical, rational, uh, intellectual conversation. That's something that I highly value. Not when I need my tire changed, right. but when I want to sit down and have a, a good, fun, vigorous conversation. And so, so there, there, were, there were a couple of things. So, um, the question is, um, you know, is there a God and then, or is there a creator? And is the creator a God? And what is the nature of this God? And I don't think that, um, I, I basically, I'm not going to try and argue with you if you call the creator a god or if you call the creator or what the nature of the god is. I don't think that's reasonable to do, particularly given um, your regard for that type of uh, thinking. But um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the probability, like I mentioned in my comments, the probability of um, life on Earth. And so there are scientists who um, wish to initiate, you know, they wish to create in a laboratory the situation where life will spontaneously arise whether you know, it's in a test tube or something like that. And, um, and they also look at what those conditions would be, like for the conditions on earth that allow life to spontaneously arise. Um, and first of all, in the case of trying to create life in a lab, um, it's, been a very, it's been a serious problem. Um, and I don't know if you've gone, because before this meeting, I did just a little bit of Google. I'm like, well, you know, what are the arguments for, you know, scientific arguments for, um, for theism or belief in a creative intelligence, as I would put it. Um, and you know, I reviewed them, and it's really there. There actually aren't. There they can't do it. They can't. They can't create life in a lab. And the consensus of a scientist is that the ones that I were reading, and I recognize their names, but I don't. You know, uh, was that um, it, uh, it? It if it were something that happened spontaneously, then it would be. You know, it would take a morning to do it in the lab. It wouldn't be hard. And then going from that, they actually generated the, you know, they statistically looked at the analysis, you know, rational statistical analysis of the likelihood of life spontaneously arising. And, and it was astronomically high. I and mean, it, was, it was very much against that. So that's just the, the, the instance of if conditions were perfect, which we know what they are now because we have life to compare it to, what would it take for life to arise? And it's like nothing. Um, not not only there's statistic, blah, 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 but, you know, the simple argument is they say, okay, what if you had a million monkeys typing on a million typewriters? How long would it take for them to generate Shakespeare's Hamlet? Um, and it's like, it wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't happen. The, the, the probability against it is very, very high. And I don't think you have to believe that I'm, that this is true necessarily, but I think you should recognize that this is a rational, scientific, factual argument saying, we are pretty sure that life exists, but we have no mechanism to describe how it could have arisen outside of an intelligence that directed it. And in addition to that, and in addition to that, the conditions that we're living under on this planet, they, you know, it, the, the study, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, um, they're, they're realizing that, that they're, they're, it's very hard to find a planet like this, like very hard, like, like impossible. Right. And so I'm not saying these are necessarily compelling arguments, but if you are a rational person and you look at these arguments, you say, well, okay, what is the most likely thing? And so now actually people who are um, what I call scientists, you know, scientism scientists who um, basically they have thrown out the possibility that there would be a creative intelligence that they don't understand. So having thrown out that possibility, which it's a good exercise, then they look for possibilities. And, and primarily what they're coming up with now, well, is it must have come from another planet. The, the, you know, the intelligent, the life that started on this planet must have come from another planet. But it's like, they say, so what holds up the world? Well, it's on the back of a turtle. You, you've heard this, right? Right. Okay, well, what, what holds up the turtle? Well, it's standing on the back of another turtle. Well, what's underneath that is turtles all the way down. And mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't help the cause of saying that 
you know, life spontaneously generated to say it happened somewhere else and we have no idea how it could have happened. Because what the scientists have is a prior commitment to refusal to believe the possibility that it was directed by an intelligence. And then a little bit further on that is, you know, um, quantum physics has shown that uh, the observation of an experiment, just the observation of an experiment can affect the outcome of an experiment. And so what you have is consciousness. Basically, they're, just, they're saying if consciousness is, is present in this thing. And so it kind of goes to the thing, so what is consciousness? Can you measure it? Well, no, you can't really measure it. You know, can you tell if it's there? Well, sort of. Well, if you can't measure it and you can't quantify it, it doesn't exist by the reasoning of this sort of thing. So I'm just wanting to say is there are rational arguments. Um, and even for instance, um, when you look at the, the chain of evolution, you know, the I'm not a creationist. I think basically I think that I think that there is it seems obvious to me, and I'm not going to prove this point, but it seems obvious to me that there was some intelligence guiding the formation of life on this planet. And if you look at the um the chain of evolution for humanity, and you're looking for the missing link in the chain of evolution, it's pretty much 99% missing links. And so now they're they're trying to come up with theories of, well, punctuated equilibrium and things like this, but it's there are rational arguments, and maybe you've heard all these before. So what you have explained to me seems like a, a good argument or several good arguments against spontaneous, the earth just spontaneously happening or, or coming about. But the, my position isn't that, there, that the word earth just spontaneously came about. My position is, I don't know. I don't know that it matters. I don't know that I care, but I don't know what happened. To assume, though, that because spontaneous, from what you say, and I, I believe you, that it, it didn't just spontaneously come about, okay, then that's something that we can say, good argument against that. Then what I would look for is, well, then I, I think my position would be, I don't know how it came about. And then if someone is going to say, hey, I think I know, I think it came about because of A, then I'd say, great, will you provide some evidence for A? And no one has ever done that for me when A is theism. And so but maybe- is it evidence that there is life? No, no. That there is evidence, no other explanation? Evidence that there's a God or that there's a, a- No, that there is life is evidence that there is a creative intelligence. No, oh, no, no, that there is a God is what, oh, is what I'm talking about. Well, you know, I said creative intelligence, God- the nature of God. We're going to step back from the nature of God to God to go back to creative intelligence, directing intelligence. So are you uncomfortable with the idea of a directing intelligence, um, even if it's not called God? What do you define? How would you define directing intelligence? I have not familiar with that term. Like a consciousness that created life. Yeah, I'm not comfortable. I mean, I, I, I've never heard, heard that term. I've right, never... but aren't you curious? Like, because an intellectual would be very curious about the origins of life. They would ask, why? Why is this doing this? And then, they, and then they would say, well, you know, it basically lightning struck in this primordial soup and the lightning created these molecules and the molecules evolved. Um, but we have no evidence that this would ever happen. And we have no ability to create this. And there's no reason to think it would happen because it's phenomenally impossible. Um, and so we think that something else must have been in effect. So that's that's a reasonable intel, that's an intellectual pursuit. I mean that's that's much more intellectual than saying, well, I don't know how it happened and I don't really care. It's not interesting to me. And I and I, I hate to put words in your mouth, but that's what it sounds like. Okay. And so it sounds to me like you are you have chosen an anti-intellectual position. And from there you're criticizing people who have chosen an intellectual position, not just theologists, but even scientists who are saying, listen, um, you know, we can't generate life. No, I'm not criticizing someone else's choice of the million things that we could all have an interest in to examine intellectually. No, no, you were. You were saying they're not intellectual and you attached a value to not being intellectual. So you were criticizing their choice. No, you're talking about something we were talking about 10 minutes ago. We're talking about something okay. new now. We're talking about the existence of a God or a creative intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so a God slash creative intelligence, and I, I'm not familiar with what that is, but a, a, a mystical intelligence. It's not necessarily mystical. Is it, is it a provable thing? Does consciousness exist? Don't know. See, now that's an intellectual question. And there are people who are pretty sure of it. And there are people who are very intellectual 
who have studied consciousness and really think about it a lot. And those people, and I don't always follow their arguments, I consider them to be very intellectual. And they come up with, they come up with ideas that I couldn't have thought of that make a lot of sense. If they come up with an idea, and so what I'm, first of all, let me go back to the, the first thing. There are a million different intellectual things that could be discussed. So the fact that I choose a set of three or 200 to intellectually discuss, and then I also happen to like sports ball, which I don't want to say I did, um, that then I choose not to intellectually discuss. I, I want to emotionally, my team is the best, discuss that. Just because somebody doesn't choose one of the other 980, whatever it is, other questions, that doesn't mean that they're not an intellectual. If a person addresses an intellectual question, which I would completely agree, hey, how about we critters, how do we come about? How'd the earth come about? That sounds like a really good question to pursue. I, it's not one of my top 10 or 20, but it sounds like a really good intellectual question that a lot of people have looked at. And so when I hear somebody say, well, I think the world just spontaneously came about. Then I think back to my conversation with you and I go, yeah, I'm gonna need some good proof of that because it doesn't seem probability wise from what my buddy Joel said, probability wise, that doesn't seem like a good thing. I'm gonna need a good bit of evidence for that or, or a good argument for it. And then it would be the same for if somebody said, oh, I think it was an intelligent creator or a God or something like that. I'm like, okay, do you have some evidence for that? I'm, you know, if you have some, I'd be interested. Um, Don't you think the fact that life exists is evidence for that? No, that's because begging scientists the do. Scientists who study that do. Yeah, I think they're if they're doing that, they're begging the people question. who are a lot smarter than me. That's and what me. they say, and but they really look into it. They're committing the logical fallacy of begging the question, though. You can't so explain say, to me. Explain to me like the the fallacy of begging the question. Explain to begging me the question would be saying, "I believe that God created, uh, or I create. I believe that A." caused the world to happen because if a didn't the world wouldn't have happened that's not a well, good well there's also the scientific method right right you observe a phenomenon you develop a hypothesis right and you look at ways to test your hypothesis and then once you've tested it you look at ways to modify your hypothesis right yep so didn't you just describe the scientific method when no. you described begging the question no how is that different it's it's 180 degrees different. It's like well, they observe special. something, they posit a hypothesis, and they look for ways to test it to confirm it or deny it. Yeah, but that's not what we were. I was addressing. I was addressing. How is how is what you were addressing different from that? I'm sorry, I don't understand. What I thought I understood you to say was, the world was created by this other being because, and then I said, well, but I need some evidence for that. Well, the world exists. That's how we know. Well, no, that's not how we know because- Well, the world exists and we haven't found a better um, explanation. So it'd be a working hypothesis. You haven't found, it's exactly- The other thing is, so, so Shepard, what, if it, if it, do you have any idea how it could have happened otherwise? No. But you're not a scientist and you haven't looked at it. No. But, and yet you're rejecting the possibility of top no. scientists who think, yes, well, you, well, you're rejecting, yes, because you're calling them irrational. But I'm rejecting, I'm not rejecting the possibility. I am saying that it's irrational to believe in something that doesn't have any proof or good evidence. And it has it, proof and good. It, the thing is, it has proof and good evidence. And it's and not maybe, just me saying it. It's people who study it who are saying it. And maybe that's just what I have not yet heard. The people who I've talked to in the past have not produced any of that. Um, well, but maybe, I would certainly, maybe you don't understand the evidence that they're seeing. Correct. I mean, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when, when you look at, I mean, you look at the probabilities, and there is no, and you can't think of another hypothesis, and it's a reasonable hypothesis considering, say, the studies that, you know, consciousness can affect the physical world. Um, you know, the, the, the quantum physics thing. Um, and yet you're rejecting that out of hand. And so I guess, you know, my question is, I don't know, it's just why? <laughs> because I need evidence. I need some. No, 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 you keep saying there isn't any evidence. There is evidence. Then it's like it's like we give me a piece. The fact that there isn't any other logical explanation. That is not evidence of something else being. But let's say you dropped the ball and it fell, and fell the theory of gravity, and you basically said, "Well, look, it's proportional to the mass and the distance of these objects, uh, and it works pretty well, except there's this unfortunate problem that 
uh, it doesn't stay constant because gravity is a, is a function of mass and mass changes according to the velocity and velocity is relative to, you know, it's real, relative to the observer and that kind of stuff. But um, I mean, I'm sure you don't understand gravity because nobody understands gravity. Right. And so, so you're looking at this thing and somebody says, well, it's because of gravity and they don't know why it works. They don't know what causes it. They have some methods to determine a likely, you know, like they can, they can do ballistic calculations. Um, and yet you accept that and it's pretty much the same reasoning. It's like, well, there's no evidence of it. Hmm. No I, understanding yeah. of it. I it's strongly like, well, it's, yeah, but it's the most likely, it's the most likely thing to, to think that when we drop something, it's caused by gravity, even though we have no understanding of it. Um, and yet you, you accept that. It's and a yet, repeatable. You look at something else that has the most likely, and I don't know if that's because it's quantifiable. I mean, it's a it's something that if I use the scientific method and I try to replicate that experiment and it happens over and over, and then you say, "What's your definition of gravity?" Maybe I'm not going to give a good physics into uh, a good intellectual uh, thing that a physics professor would love, but I would say, "Well, when you have something, you drop it. It goes toward the, the center of the Earth." And I don't know if it's something pushing from above or pulling from below, but it seems like every time I drop a pencil, it goes down, and I'm going right. to call that gravity. And right. So I believe that that kind of has been, in, you know, in my layperson terms, now that's been proven. Right. Whereas to say, there's a bunch of stuff out here, and somebody says, well, I think it's because there was an intelligent mover. And somebody says, anybody have a better idea? Nobody does. And I say, well, it's no, 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 people have, people have better ideas. They come up with them all the time, and they test them, and they don't work out. Okay. So then in so the they fail. So there, there's called false, falsifiability is also a function of science. But in proving numbers one through nine incorrect does not make number 10 correct. No, but, but having a gravity that is um, a mystery that we live by, and we've just observed that it's predictable, it's, it's the same level of faith. And mm. I, I guess, you know, I also sent you the, the, um, the list of cognitive biases. I don't know if you've been through that um, on Wikipedia. Very interesting look, because um, it, it kind of, it, it kind of shows that humans are not particularly rational. Okay. But at this point, so you're, you're not willing to accept evidence um, that people who are experts in their field are willing to accept. That's your choice. Um, I don't think you can claim that that choice is rational. Um, but you, I mean, of course you can claim that choice is rational, but I don't think the evidence is that that choice of yours is rational. Um, and I think that the other point that I, I wanted to make, and I, I'm not surrendering rationality, but I do want to say that the scientific method and rationality are not. Um, they serve, they don't rule. Like for instance, scientific method is fatally flawed. It doesn't converge on truth because every time you do an experiment, um, you come up with more hypotheses than you had in the first place. And so it is. it has its uses, but it's very limited. Um, and I think, I don't know if you read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, but he- it, So it long ago, I don't remember it. Yeah, but he, but he really went through this, the scientific method and it's like, hmm, that was interesting. And I wonder if it's just him, but it's like, no, it's a recognized flaw of science. Um, and that was another problem actually, you know, I, I guess I'm, I, I don't want to get, too far off, off subject, but um, uh, you had sent me a list of um, an essay of people who are developing morality based on rationality. Yes. Um, and, I, and it was interesting, um, but again, it was like, you know, rationality, it has its use. Um, and, and sort of the way I see it is you basically your, your rationality points to your faith. I mean, and, I think, and I think you might agree with that because you were saying, I look at these things, they make sense. Um, I can't have sure knowledge, but the rationality has pointed me in the direction to make this choice, right? And so you said, so I'm making these choices. I, I think I quoted a few things where you had made, you know, made choices. I choose to believe this. Right. Um, and so rationality and faith, and you might not call it faith, but it's belief, um, they work together. You, you, you look at things that are likely, and then you um, believe things that you can have no certainty about. And the other thing is, so, so for instance, with going back to gravity, you know, one of the good things about gravity is that um, we can calculate ballistics with it, with the, you know, it's not just gravity, but of course, gravity and air resistance and things like that. Um, and so if you are, if you are a religious person and you have a, a belief that is not entirely, um, you can't, you can't have, you can't have a perfect belief. It's not perfectly rational. And yet when you make these decisions and they, um, they are functional in your life, like for instance, you make a decision like, well, um, for the people that you sent me the thing on um, 
morality being rational. It's like there is no reason that it wouldn't be okay to be a heroin addict. Um, it's like, Correct. no, that's reasonable. That's, that's, that's completely ethical. There's nothing wrong with it or, you know, or sell people heroin so they can be an addict. Correct. Um, but a religious person would say, no, actually there are, there are some working, um, there are some functional guidelines that arise from this belief that provide very useful, um, provide, they're very useful in having people have a better life. Yes. For instance, it's similar to uh, gravity, making it very useful to hit your target when you're making a long shot. Um, and so I really, I really feel like it's the same thing. And, it, you know, you don't see it as that at all because, and that's why I, I the colorblind analogy. I, I said, well, it's like, it's almost like you're colorblind, um, Shepard, because, you know, you can't see reds and greens, but you see shapes really well. And then you came back with the analogy of, oh, you know, well, if you take uh, a solution in a drug, you see things. And I don't see those things. So it's like, no, I think it's more like you're not seeing things that are there. And I think it's willful as opposed to not seeing things that are not there. Um, what is an example of a thing that I am not seeing that is there? You're not seeing that the most likely explanation for life is a creative intelligence. You're just not seeing it. Okay. And, not, and there are many people that do see it. What does that, I mean, isn't it kind of incumbent upon somebody who says, here, I have an idea why this thing is, to, to be able to explain in an understandable way why that thing is? I don't think you can shift the burden of proof like that. I think if they say, um, this is a rational thing, there's much evidence for this. It's been a very common belief. There's been a lot of intellectual work around this, and um, it makes a lot of sense. It describes the physical world. This belief describes actions in the physical world. And then you say, well, the burden of proof is on you, and I don't believe it. And they've just provided you a bunch of proof. Um, None of the things you just listed were proof. I mean, I didn't. Right, but that's the same thing with gravity. It's like, do you know how it works? No. No. But, 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 but it's a faith. You have a faith in gravity. I wouldn't use that word. I would I say would. I, I drop things and they head down. So there's a good I would say if you don't understand how something works, or why something is, but you believe in it, I think I would call that faith. If you don't have a I reason for it, but you believe in it, yeah, or an understanding and you believe in it, I think that's faith. Hmm. That I think most be. of what we do is, I mean, most of what we have is faith because, you know, for instance, I use a cell phone. You know, I expect that a lot of times it works. Um, I don't understand everything about how it works, <laughs> but I have a faith in my cell phone working because it's hmm. been reliable for me. And I, have hmm? I have rejected for many years the word faith. And then a year or two ago, I looked it up and I looked at definition after definition. I, I don't want to fall for the definition fallacy. So I looked up a bunch of them and I realized that almost all definitions of faith are not what I had been thinking of it as and defining it for many, many, many years. You might find that if you start looking at the definition of intellectual also. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's that absolutely. However, as the speaker of a word, the speaker gets to choose, hey, when I say pretty, this is what I mean by pretty, this isn't. No, that's, no, that's not true. If the speaker of a word, you get to do that. But if you're in a conversation, in order to have a conversation, you need to agree on terms. Correct. Yeah, so I don't think that's, and, and it's not, uh, you know. I disagree with that. I think you need to agree on the terms. Oh, no, we're not disagreeing on it. I completely oh, okay. agree. That's in my list of having an intellectual conversation is if if you choose to use the word big and I am not sure that we're on the same page with big, then I need to say, do you mean this big? And you say, no, 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 that's small. I mean this big. And when I say, okay, for the sake of this conversation, we'll agree that this is big. And so once we have then agreed upon that term, then we can go forward uh, I have a challenge with the words that I have for so long believed means uh, meant a certain mean a certain thing that and now that I look at it and go okay well most people use a different one maybe I should switch over to their meaning of the word and then as my brain I'm not smart enough as my brain goes it tries to keep up with that and then so that's why I'm kind of acquiescing and saying okay maybe faith is a good word to describe that. Um, is there, is there, I mean, because I'm trying to think of another word that would work, um, you know, things that you accept without understanding, um, besides faith, there's probably another word for it, you know, like my telephone will work, I don't understand how it works, but I accept it, maybe it's acceptance, 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the word would be. And I, I do see a difference between the gravity or a phone working or something like that, that say something that you can actually look at. And, and you keep saying that you can actually look at it. It's like, if you were refusing to see it, you know, you just wouldn't see it. You know, you just wouldn't see it. So it's, it's just like a denial, you know, there are people who are denying reality. So um, there is good, solid evidence in the existence of the supernatural God, a, a theistic thing, that's the definition of it. There is good, solid evidence of the supernatural, but I am not able to see that. Is that what you suspect might be happening? I wouldn't necessarily describe it as supernatural because I wasn't going there, but I was saying, yes, it's directed intelligence. It is creative, and yes. Huh. That's what I think. I think that it's there and you don't see it. And I, I know there are things that I don't see and I refuse to see. Um, and I go back to the list of cognitive biases and I'm like, yeah, that's right. There's a lot, uh, there's a lot I don't see. In fact, you know, because I, I came from a very non-religious background. Um, it's an intellectual kind of new age background. And um, uh, I had a violent um, antipathy toward anything Christian, which is actually, now that I am uh, consider myself a Christian, um, it's very interesting to see that it's very much, um, it's a very much culturally generated uh, antipathy. It's like, oh, it's just, oh, you look at the movie, there's the evil priest, you know, there's the, there's the ignorant uh, religious person. Um, you know, there's the, the hypocritic, you know, religious person. It's just, you know, it's all everywhere. Um, and since then, since I've actually tried to make a commitment, um, uh, you know, to Christianity, a lot more has been revealed to me that I just couldn't have seen before. Hmm. Uh, or, or I couldn't even follow the argument before. Yeah. Like, I don't agree with it all. I'm a terrible Christian, but I, I'm able to actually consider the possibility. And I feel like with you, I just feel the door slamming. Um, and I don't know why, and it doesn't, you know, and that's the way a lot of people are. It's, it's just the way it is. Um, yeah. see, but to I me, see. it actually, it looks like, a, it looks like a blindness. I mean, have you read Aquinas? You know, I mean, you read, I, I, I watched your other video and somebody posted a Bible quote. It's like, that is just so the wrong thing to do with Shepherd. It's like, and in fact, um, you know, I, I actually wrote this sentence and take, took it out of my commentary about 10 times, but um, for a Catholic, as far as I understand it, I'm a terrible Catholic, but um, scripture is accurate to the extent that it describes the world or that it describes existence. That's the, that's what scripture, it's like, it's like a beautiful, you know, it's like Shakespeare. It's like, oh, that's so great. It's great the way they did it. But for a Protestant, it is that way because the Bible said it. Um, and so I think the person who was quoting to you that way was saying, it is the way because, the, see, that look, this proves it. Like it says it in the Bible, this proves it. And it's like, that's not how it works. You know, at least that's not how it works for me. It illustrates it. And if it, and, it, and the thing is, it's so open to interpretation. Um, but so yeah, I just. If I go along with the, the idea that it's uh, very possible that I have a bias and this bias is not allowing me or a blind spot. Or, or a outright hatred or whatever of the idea, and that I am open to a bunch of ideas, except the idea of theism, I say, I, I don't see any evidence for that. And then people say, oh, there is a bunch of it out there. And I said, well, give me one piece and nobody does. How do you say nobody does? I just gave you a bunch of evidence, but you refused it. Huh. Best hypothesis, best, best hypothesis for life on earth. That is evidence. Best hypothesis for a ball falling when you drop it is gravity. There are other hypotheses. I don't, have you heard of the electric universe theory? No. There are people that don't think that the universe is held together by gravity, like, like the orbits of the planets. They say it's not gravity, it's an electric force. And I've read their stuff. I can't follow it really well, but they say, no, gravity is, gravity is BS. It's not <clears> right. <throat> um, and uh, <laughs> so. You're giving me a lot to think about. I like this, thank you. Well, um, and the other, yeah, the other thing, you know, that, that really struck, I was just so surprised because for me, um, you know, I'm Christian, but I'm anything because I believe in liberty. It's like, and I, and I should be Christian first, but I, honestly, I'm like pro-liberty first. Like I say, I'm a terrible Christian. But um, the fact that you didn't understand the link between um, the suppression of religion and the uh, genocide and murder of, of people in the 20th century, um, like that was just shocking to me. Like, that's like, yeah, he really doesn't see things. He doesn't see that there's a connection. He doesn't see that 
um, you know, if people are, you know, if people are religious, they don't do mass murders. I mean, if you look at the map of Germany, um, it's just, it, it just, it goes on and on, you know, basically voting patterns, things like this, but it's, yeah, it's, it's just that you don't see it because you're not willing to look at it. Well, it seems like, the other, the other, pardon? It seems like Pol Pot, Mao, there were quite a few of the big genocide guys that were. Lenin. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's, I think the evidence is very clear that there oh, were even a lot in, of. Even in communist China now, I mean, they're, they're basically, they're, they're, they're killing Christians. Yeah. Yeah. It's horrible. Um, but it's, but it's, it's, it's a part of their, it's necessary. It's part of their, it's part of what goes with, because if they were religious, they wouldn't be as able to do that. And then there's, you know, there's always the, the Spanish Inquisition and all that. And so I don't know if you've ever looked up Black Legend, but um, it's, it's also an interesting, you can look up Black Legend because everybody was doing it to everybody back then. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just, and there were all kinds of reasons besides religion. And the deaths were horrible, but they were in the thousands, not the millions. Yeah, and I thought I agreed with you that the most of the bad guys did did not want strong family right, ties. Right, but you hadn't heard of that. Like, how can you have not have heard of that if you're into liberty? I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Innocence betrayed and the, the, the film and such. Didn't they talk about that in there? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, oh, I'm, yeah, if I said I had never heard of that, I was wrong. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, it seems, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't think that has to do with a, you know, a person to be good or bad whether or not they believe in gravity that they can't prove or theism that they can't prove or- Well, and you know, people operate, people have a software, right? There's a hardware and the software. You know, it's worldview. It's the operate, it's the, it's the mindset and how it works. Um, and the atheistic mindset is associated with a lot of terrible things. It's associated with genocide, eugenics, um, uh, euthanasia, uh, infanticide. Um, it's just because if you don't place a value on, the, what, how can you place a value on the person? If they're just um, a collection of you know a random event, hmm. it's, it's the, the, so this is it's a correlation. It's again, it's a correlation. Yeah, a correlation. Like, I would agree. Yeah, it's a correlation. It's like, oh well, people with this mindset do this, and people with this mindset don't do this. And and in order to be a truly horrible person, a lot of times it helps to be truly atheistic. You know, not that there aren't some really horrible you know religious people also, hmm. particularly Christians. So, I, I think though that the the fact that a person does or doesn't believe in a thing. Like that, that's kind of atheism is it's not a perspective or a point of view so much as there's something I don't know. It hasn't been proven to me. It's you know, like, there's no good evidence of it. So therefore I don't think it <laughs> you keep saying that's your, that's your mantra. Hasn't been yes. proven to me. No good evidence. Hasn't been proven to me. No good evidence. That's your yeah. mantra. Think about that. Would you, because think I about that and apply it to other things. Would you, because I have that blind spot that I'm not seeing, like if you ask me right now, Repeat to me, Shepard, the evidence that I offered to you. And I would say, I'm drawing a blank. Would you, tonight, tomorrow, whenever, would you send me a single sentence or two, or I guess a two wouldn't be a single, but just a sentence or paragraph or something with a piece of evidence that I can't see, and I will cut it out and tape it up where I can look at it constantly, and I will try to open my mind up to that piece of evidence. But, but right now I can't think back to what you said. So there's no way I can work on it. I only said two things. I said two things. I said, the evidence for life. You remember that one, right? The evidence like basically for life. Basically that, that there is no evidence that life cre was created spontaneously. Correct. And it's sort of like if there's two things, if there's two possibilities, like what's the third possibility? There's no evidence it was created spontaneously. That's one possibility. The other is, it was created by directed intelligence, right? That, that, can you think, a of a third, false can you think of a third possibility for those two? No, I'm not into that. That's not a right. science thing, but and it so is a false The technology. evidence is that it's impossible that it was created spontaneously, right? So and unless you come up with a third hypothesis, I would say that it's evidence that there was directed intelligence. So that was the first one. That's the only thing I would say, that one. Okay. And the other one is, okay, what about consciousness affecting the physical world? Because that's a quantum, that's a discovery of quantum mechanics. The, ob, the fact that somebody is observing something. And that's a little bit more um, abstract. But if you think about that, you know, that's, I would think about that. So I, I can't really send you anything besides those. Um, I would suggest if you're curious, which I don't think you are, um, just Google um, arguments against atheism. And even if you, 
hate doing that. And even if you hate the idea, it will make you a much better um, atheist because you'll be able to argue the points. Yeah, I don't remember what they are, but I've heard like there was some lecture years ago and it was so funny. A Christian buddy gave it to me and said, here, this is proof. And I listened to it and I said, so I never said proof, though. I said evidence. Oh, no, no. I'm saying my buddy. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. different friend. Mm-hmm. And he said, and so he says, here it is. And I listened to it. And I'm like, yes, this is absolutely proof. Thank you for coming around to my side. And it was so interesting that we were both looking at the same, same debate. Yeah. And we both thought, well, there's conclusive evidence. It's just, yeah. it's neat how the brain works uh, or doesn't at times. So it yeah. could have been me, could have been him. I don't know. But and I also, you know, I'm not sure you see a value in, in theism. Like, here's an instance, like, what if it was a complete fabrication, but by believing in it, you and the world would be a massively better place. There's an interesting idea too. Now, I'm not saying that's the case. Right. But I think you believe the opposite. And I think that would prevent you, like if you were looking for a way to free your mind, that would be a way to free your mind to actually look at the evidence. Just a consideration. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm really going to have, thank you. I'm going to have to really think about these because I, I think that my goal, as my buddy says, uh, I, copying what he says, my goal in life is to believe as many true things as possible and to disbelieve as many untrue things as possible. And so it's just, it's a search for truth. And you chisel away at the bad stuff and you add the good stuff and always open to, to new good arguments or ideas or whatever. And I think I'm that person, but I'm hearing from you who I think you're a smart guy, you're a friend, you're not out like, how can we mess up shepherd's life? I don't think <laughs> I'm that's not your trolling goal. you. I'm not trolling. You. Yeah, I know. I know. And so like, you're making me really think that as I'm, as I'm listening to you talk, I'm thinking, nope, not, nope, no, no evidence, no this, no that. And I'm thinking all of these things. And so I'm really going to have to go back and say, do I have to suspend the subjective system that I have chosen, which is reason, logic, that kind of stuff. Do I have to suspend that in order to believe in something? Absolutely not. Okay. No, absolutely not. And that's what I said. I, I, you know, it it was a path of logic for me. It's it's a complete path. It's like, it just makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Hmm. And I'm not stupid. No, that's that's what I'm saying. I I don't know if I'm intellectual or not, but, and I, you know, I can't follow it, but it, it's it's a completely rational path. So when you say, in fact, you said Joel's rational in all these ways, except he's just not rational here. Yep. Um, that's actually incorrect. Um, hmm. Because I'm, it's very rational. Um, and I just think it's perhaps looking at questions that you're not as interested in. I don't know. Maybe that is. Just yeah. looking a little bit further. And, you know, when I talked about purpose and meaning, you know, infanticide. <laughs> eugenics, you know, euthanasia, um, those have atheistic roots. Um, and they don't have theistic roots because, because of the value of the individual. And, it, that, and again, that's just an argument, again, which I mentioned before. It's like, oh, that's just an argument. Well, it, it works, so do it. And I'm, it's not just that it works and do it. it. It's, you know, I believe that can be a rational argument. But really, for me, it's like, no, this just doesn't add up. Uh, this, you know, this, if, if, if this thing were random, random generation, there'd be more of it. There'd be other planets where it happened and there would be, there would be evidence for it. And it just like, like I say, nobody showed me any evidence, so I don't believe it. You know, there's no evidence that it's random and I don't believe it. Hmm. So That's you no believe- I'll give you your mantra back as my mantra. There's no evidence that, that it was not created intelligently. There just isn't. Yeah, you can't prove a negative though. I mean, you can't- Exactly, yeah. exactly, Shepard. Yeah. <laughs> you can't prove a negative. Yeah. Right. Think about yeah. that too. I will. Yeah. Because anyway, I, and I guess, you know, shall I say you triggered me? I don't know. It's like you triggered me somewhat, but for me, you know, you talk about truth. It's like, no, he made a mistake. Uh, he's wrong about intellectual. He, first of all, he's wrong about the definition. And second of all, he's wrong about the process of theistic people. Um, and so that was, that was what really motivated. It's like, no, 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 there's, there's a mistake. It's like a math problem. No, 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 this doesn't add up. He, he, you added the, the five and the seven. You should add the five and the nine. You know, okay. So. Yeah, and this is something that, as I think I mentioned in the first video, I'm not sure, that I had this conversation with my dear, dear close friend, like a grandfather to me, and 
love him to death. And I made the comment as we were sitting drinking at two in the morning over the fireplace, debating philosophy, all this stuff. I made the comment, well, you're not an intellectual. You're intellectual in many ways, but you are not. I can't give you that title because you're, you're irrational when it comes to theism. And, right. then I, and it, I could tell it, it hurt it. Mm-hmm. Like hurt his feelings, and I'm thinking because it was un, it might have been untrue. Although people have many paths, you know, they 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 have you know different reasons. So yeah, yeah. So then I start I started thinking about it for many days, and that's when I started looking up definitions. And I'm like, no, I can't find a way to say that a witch doctor is intellectual. And oh, a, a witch doctor could actually be could absolutely be intellectual. Yeah, absolutely. It's it, because you're you're like I said again, you're conflating rational with intellectual. Okay. And so, so, and I sent you that chart, which was interesting of facts, basically yeah. facts on one grid, logic on the other. Um, and the same thing happens with mathematics. You can define the terms of your mathematical system. And then within that system, you're either consistent or inconsistent. Right. And you can define the terms of your logic. And within that system, you're either system, you're either consistent or inconsistent. And the foundations, in fact, I'm convinced of this, and I, I, I should read the philosophers to find out what they say. But um, essentially, the foundations of all of our logic are a belief, um, substantiated or unsubstantiated, and there will be a certain level of evidence to it. But you know, even starting with Descartes, I think, therefore I am. That's his belief. He just he started there. There's no proof of it. It's just that's what he's thinking. And so, whenever you have a logical system, it's going to be that way. It's going to be founded on something. So your friend, um, and you. You have logic that operates in your mind, and you have uh, axioms that your logic, your logical conclusions, and your logical uh, trains are based on. And your axioms have more or less evidence for them, but none of them are perfect. None of them, all of them, are faith-based. Hmm. Every single axiom, because you can't even know that you're not. I mean, this is me, my assertion, and I haven't read the philosophers, but you, you know, how do we know we're not a character in somebody's story? You know, what is our existence? How much existence do we really have? Where do our thoughts come from? Um, when the light waves strike our eyes and our brain interprets what we see, um, there's a lot. There's a lot of wiggle room in there. Um, so, so to say that you're you have a rock solid foundation all the way to logic, um, I, you know, I don't have a. I can't say for sure that's true, but I don't think it's true. I don't think anybody has that. I think everybody yeah. at some point is based on faith, and so our our reason. And our observation point to the faith that we choose. And that's, that's to some extent what I was saying when I sent you the thing about uh, the master. Like basically you choose your master. Like, you know, where am I gonna place my faith? And some people will rely on experts and some people will rely on authority and some people will rely on themselves. And it's always a mix of all those things. But at, the, at your foundation, Shepard, I believe that you're based on faith. And so to say that you're rational and other people are not, um, for me, that seems like a contradiction. And I. I can't argue it strongly, but that's my observation. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, I can't wait to re-watch this with, uh, multiple times and really get it j- jiggling around and thinking about it. And, um, yeah. This is, this is, well, a, thank I, you so much for, you know, Shepard, I really appreciate that you took the time. You know, oh, it, thank it, you. It very, it was incredibly kind. So. It's, uh, it's too often that we will toss out something and then somebody will just write a response and say, you're an idiot or <laughs> you know, something like that. Or, or even worse, just, okay, ignore it. Well, no. Yeah, well, my, my first reaction is if somebody disagrees with me, it's like, are you ignorant or stupid? Or no, it's basically, <laughs> are you ignorant or evil, right? Are you ignorant or evil? I know I'm right. So are you ignorant or evil? <laughs> <laughs> well, I and want people guys, to point out right, when right. I'm wrong and fix me and help me fix myself. <laughs> and that's awesome. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I've got lots to think about. And maybe after I've molded around a lot, we can, uh, well, in a week or two, we're going to continue it live or talk about other stuff. And then maybe we could do another video once I've had another few weeks to mull it over and uh, okay. we can both come up with some more points. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate right. it. Great. Well, thank you, Shepard. Have a great night, Joel. All right. See you. <laughs> Bye.